Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with All Angles here on ENCA. We look at the water crisis in the country as adequate water sanitation and hygiene coverage are necessary for a healthy and dignified life experience for all. And in many areas of the country, inadequate water and sanitation resources remain a significant public health challenge. We are joined by Professor Tracy Lindfield, a VITS professor who has participated in an interdisciplinary study group on sanitation for the past 18 months. Professor, good afternoon to you and thank you so much for joining us. Of course, we can't separate uh, sanitation and water. B before we even get into uh, your research, just give us a sense of how it all works. In other words, from a national government level to the various provinces, municipal level, and where the problems largely lie. Good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon, Cindy. Uh, so, okay, yeah, that's a complicated question. And because of the fact that we still rely largely on waterborne sanitation, uh, everything's kind of linked, right? So you get the, the water from a raw water source, there, there is a raw water to infrastructure, then it goes to the municipalities, there's distribution infrastructure. Uh, the chain of responsibility, um, essentially municipalities, water service authorities, are responsible for basic water supply and basic sanitation, and that is a constitutional right. But they are supposed to be supported by provincial and national governments. So although we like to beat municipalities with a stick, it really is a whole of government response that we need to be looking at here. Yeah, and what does the picture tell us? Because, you know, the advent of democracy, and as you're saying, these rights are enshrined in the Constitution, that water is life and sanitation is dignity. Uh, and where yeah. it is that the, the, the ball has been dropped here? One, there was this whole campaign around eradicating the bucket system. Uh, and then there was, you know, we're still sitting with pit latrines in certain areas, let alone the promises that have not been fulfilled. <sighs> So, exactly. We, we started in 1994 with a huge backlog. Millions of people did not have access to basic water supply and basic sanitation. Incidentally, the RDP standard for basic sanitation is a VIP toilet. It's not a flush toilet. And uh, in our context, where we have a very water-scarce country, we need to consider whether waterborne sanitation is the most appropriate uh, form of technology that we, that we need to be using here. But uh, immense strides have been made. But if you look at some of the latest statistics on the National Water Knowledge System, which is a database that the Water Department of Water Sanitation maintains, something like 7 million South Africans still fall below the RDP standard for access to water, which is 25 litres per person per day. And about uh, 12 million people still fall below the RDP standard for, uh, for sanitation. That is just in terms of access, but then even with those who do have access, there are increasingly problems with you know, disruption to water supply, the waste water treatment plants not working properly, um, due to a whole range of drivers which we can get into. Do you think some of the problems could also be that there's a ten tendency from government of making announcements around projects and campaigns and then it's all these bells and balloons and the impl implementation thereof becomes problematic. If you take the National Development Plan, for example, uh, which in 2030 is supposed to have dealt with a myriad of issues, including basic service delivery, water and sanitation amongst those, that uh, it's fragmented. You know, that that's why there is no evaluation and monitoring of a particular system to the point where it is completed and we've seen, you know, it, its benefits. I think you're correct. There have been various targets that have been set and have not been met. But just as a sort of a public education, civic involvement, uh, the National Treasury maintains very, very detailed statistics on all the resource measures that municipalities have been taking to implement water and sanitation. So there is that high level monitoring. Those statistics are available, those budgets are available to anybody to go look at. You know, how many how many uh, households are served with free basic water, for example, detailed information. So it's all there. You know, why why is this why is this not um, why aren't we seeing implementation? They are the problem is complex, there are a range of drivers. Um, there are, there's a lot of money actually available. There, there are at least six, eight grants, uh, you know, in addition to the equitable share that municipalities get uh, to, to fund various aspects of infrastructure provision or skills development um, maintained by National Treasury, COGTA, and the Department of Water and Sanitation. But 
uh, we we see that it's also very expensive. You know, this waterborne sanitation systems that we have are extremely expensive. So the, the free basic services cost a lot of money. They're running to hundreds of millions and billions of rand. Um, and so what I think we need in this country is a lot more transparency and accountability around uh, monitoring, which is, a water, which is a municipal function, but national government also has a clear role to play there. And then, um, yeah, uh, so, just, yeah, sorry, uh, Bob. So as you were saying about transparency, I just want to go back to the interdisciplinary study group on sanitation for the past 18 months, which in itself might have had its own limitations, as you're saying, dealing with the complexities of uh, the, the, the challenge. Um, we are told that there is transparency from a national treasury point of view, especially when it comes to the tender process in the value chain of those uh, service providers who will then ensure that distribution is done or the uh, toilet toilets are built, etc. What has this study found uh, that, that gives us a picture that that maybe is not necessarily the case? So this study has really looked at sanitation as a complex problem. So in the history of sanitation, which you know goes back to the mid-1800s and London, and you know the waterborne sanitation is actually a colonial import, it's had a very kind of engineering focus where you, where you look at, you know, is there water or not water? And then you kind of go down an algorithm. So the study group was really looking at it as a very complex problem that's influenced by a number of drivers. So we've identified, you know, a number of constraints to our sanitation choices. So just taking one example, uh, in all of our sanitation policies, none of those policies has highlighted the link between water and energy. Yet if you look at why we're having such problems now with our wastewater treatment plants, it's because you've got load shedding and those plants can't operate when, it, when there's load shedding, so you have sewage spills. So that's what the study has done, to really think through all of these constraints in relation to different kinds of toilet and collection and treatment technologies. Yeah, and, and one could even say, you know, uh, we are a young democracy and certain um, aspects of that, in, in, especially when it comes to infrastructure maintenance, rehabilitation thereof um, had not been done adequately, and that's why we sit with this problem. Nonetheless, you had earlier said that the resources are there. Can we also argue that the uh, level of skill set is also there? It just is a case of lack of political will while we're sitting with this mess. So in our group, we had somebody who actually works in a wastewater treatment plant. And his input was that one of the issues he faces is that you have managers who don't have technical skills. So, you know, I could perhaps draw a parallel to ESCOM, but uh, managers who don't always understand the technical requirements and the speed with which, you know, inputs have to be made. You have to have certain inputs to the process to get a certain outcome. So I think that's possibly a one area that we could look at, and then another just at the National Qualifications Framework, how we are upskilling people, the qualifications we have, and the resources available for that. All right, Professor, we're going to have to leave it there, and uh, we'll also request um, uh, you know, the crew to put up the research uh, onto our website as well. But thank you indeed. We're speaking to Vitsa Professor, Professor Tracy Linfield, looking at the interdisciplinary study group on sanitation that they conducted over the past 18 months, saying that it is a myriad of issues. It's quite complex, historical challenges uh, of uh, infrastructure that has not been maintained and now is coming to bite uh, the uh, issue or rather service delivery and impacting negatively on a society.